Today, I thought we'd talk about this weird relic that could have been really, really awesome and remembered and celebrated, but instead is just a thing that happened that no one remembers or talks about. Mm. And that is Marvel's Dark Ages. This was a big deal for like 10 seconds <laughs> because then this thing called the coronavirus happened and uh, oh. so it was no longer a big deal. Uh, for Free Comic Book Day 2020, uh, they released a like four or five page story, like a mini kind of like prelude to all of this and it like got people hyped just like more hype came on social media. Uh, the implication was Tom Taylor, progenitor of all the good parts of Injustice Mm. and the deceased universe and of course much more uh later on but he's gonna do the deceased thing to marvel yeah he's coming over he's gonna do to marvel what he did to dc and make a new universe that's really cool and is defined by tragedy but we already did the marvel zombies thing so we're not right. gonna do like that we're gonna do something else dark ages the bam just like here ladies and gentlemen tom mm. taylor Ibn kiello it's gonna be great and everybody was just like, what, what does that mean? Like, they just said dark ages and there were a couple of, like steam pipes. And you were like, Ooh, is it like, what? Is it like 1602 Steampunk? and oh. you're like reimagining the Marvel universe in a kind of crack mirror version of the, nope. Yeah, those aren't uh, the dark ages. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> but it, the, the Marvel universe gets plunged into the dark ages from a defining universal spanning event. And uh, and it's, it's essentially an Elseworlds type thing or a, Marvel what if type of idea. Mm -hmm. Does Gal Galactus get like really hungry and instead of eating a planet, eats the sun? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, that is not what happens. Is uh, it literally dark or no? It is not. Ah. And it's also more hopeful than Deceased. Now, I also well. love Deceased. I think Deceased is great in spite of the conceit, which is, you know, people biting and... Uh, <laughs> it's zombies, yeah. Yeah, it's zombies. But a lot happens while Dark Ages is coming out. The The free comic book day issue is collected in the volume that I have in my hands, and you can find in the comments down below if you want to read this, if you haven't already, because I think you should. It's pretty fun, but I will say... And no one remembers it. And nobody remembers it, and it gets a little rushed. Hmm. And there, there's, there's a reason for that. Not a publicly announced reason, but we get the gist of it. The free comic book day issue also doesn't really jive with the tone and the beginning of the actual first issue of Dark Ages, mm. but I digress. Uh, originally, it was uh, kind of Iron Man-centric. Iron Man's flying around, there's earthquakes and stuff going on in New York. There's like some kind of odd green glow happening throughout. Uh, Pepper Potts. That's just Aurora Borealis, man. <laughs> uh, Aurora Borealis! <laughs> At this time of year, at this time of day, in this part of the country, localized entirely within Manhattan. Yes. <laughs> we did it. We did. The whole thing. We did the line. We did the whole thing. Well, you did it. I did, yeah. You, you, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't do it. Yeah. <clears throat> so Iron Man's flying around, and there's earthquakes, and there's green glowing, Aurora Borealis happening, <laughs> and Pepper Potts is on the phone talking to Tony, and she's suddenly really important because, you know, movie synergy and stuff. Right. Uh, she's in the comics. Eh, they didn't just make she her up. She's a character, yeah. She's a character. It's just that we've, we've kind of moved away from Pepper Potts being the Mary Jane equivalent right. in the Iron Man universe. <laughs> but in this, right. Taylor's like, look, I gotta save some time. I gotta, I gotta get some, some, I gotta fill in some blanks here. You, you, we, I don't have time to set up whole new romances or reestablish old romances. I, I, gotta, I gotta tell the story about right. the Dark Ages. Things are happening. That's right. right. And he's shortcuts, so, Pepper Potts. That's right, Pepper you know Potts, you get it, you yeah. know it, you love it, it's, it's happening. So Iron Man is flying around, he's talking to people, he's, he just gets disconnected from Potts, uh, he gets a phone call from uh, Captain America, also confirmation Captain America FaceTimes. Of course he does. Sure. Because the he? last thing I want is for my grandpa or grandma or mom or dad to FaceTime me. Hey, it's me. <laughs> yeah, but he's holding the phone far away. He you is. Know, he's smart. He knows. He's always right. holding it down. It's going to be an unflattering angle cap. There's no angle that's unflattering on Captain America. His armor just shut off. It just it just shuts the hell oh, no. off. So he and now he just falls out of the sky. He's just plummeting, but. He's not alone because there's an adjacent commercial aircraft that's plummeting around the same trajectory in the opposite direction. So oh. they're going to careen into each other, he what? and this plane. What? 
What are the chances? Oh, good. Yeah, well, pretty bad, but... <laughs> I mean, it's New York City. There's a lot of air There's traffic. There's a lot of air traffic. So Iron Man just smashes into the wing of this plane, and his leg... Does Will Shatner look out the window? <laughs> yeah, and goes, there's something destroying the wing. Something. No, uh, Iron Man loses his leg in the process. His oh leg just gets God. severed. Holy crap. And so the plane goes down, and it's, you know, it's bad news bears in Yeah, it's New York Manhattan. City. Yeah. And uh, Iron Man was on a trajectory towards his building, so he ends up smashing into it, and uh, Pepper Potts meets him on one of the floors that he lands in, and he is a little worse for wear, <laughs> as you can imagine, and she asks him what's going on, and he says, it's all gone dark. And that was their, like, dun-dun-dun teaser, their stinger for Ooh. Dark Ages. You're just like, holy crap. And then in the free comic book day issue, it's just like, Dark Ages is coming. And Taylor was half right, because Dark Ages did come in the form of COVID-19. <laughs> well, it was for the comic book industry, really. The, the comic book Dark Ages did not come for another year or so. Mm. And then it did. And we're just going to do another cold open. Let's forget about what happened there. Oh, my God. Because everyone else did. So right. now... And we're not doing that anymore. Wait, what did I write? Uh, we have a copy. We can just look at it. <laughs> yeah. uh, I changed my mind. It's a free comic book day issue. Everyone throws those away when they're done reading them. Apparently. Right. I love the fact that, like, Manhattan. Uh, let's reset it in New Jersey. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and there's no rhyme or reason. There's a lot of, like, setting issues in this book where mm. you're like, wait a minute. Where are we? <laughs> what country is this? The only time that we can confirm where we are is pretty much at the end because they make a pilgrimage to Europe and God only knows what country they're in in that particular continent. I said Europe. It's, it's We're good in enough. Europe. And they Somewhere. go there. And so we know that at Do least... you need an adapter? <laughs> <laughs> no. So we're in New Jersey, and the uh, Cage family is hanging out with the Parker family. And Mary Jane and Peter are married. They have a kid named May. All is right with the world. Luke and Jess are married. They have a kid named Danny. Yes. Great. They hang out, they trade kids, they, you know, people have to do stuff. They, you know, the kids are, are friends. Right. And they're having pizza, and May is just bouncing off the walls, literally. And uh, so the, the narration goes from Iron Man in the preview to Spider-Man throughout the whole book. Spider-Man is our, like, line of protagonists. Okay. Okay. Spider-Man is our point of view. So it's a Spider-Man book. Yes. Which is fine by me. Right. Uh, but also, he narrates the book and tells you from the mm. future this tale. Okay, right. so it's it all in like, like looking back on the past and what yeah, happened. Yeah, it's like when the world went dark, when this happened. Oh. Right. And the first people to feel the impending doom were the spiders. And so you see, like, Peter, May, uh, Miles, and Gwen for some reason? Gwen? Yeah, and I'm like, uh, yeah, but it's Spider Gwen. But also, like, what's she doing here? You're in another reality. She plays no other role in this story. We're just uh, establishing that she's there. She's just, she's here. Or she feels it in her reality, maybe. No, <laughs> because they don't say it's her reality. So we have to, we have to take it at face value. Right. She's here. It's one reality. Maybe she's bombing around. I don't know. But they all get their spider senses go off. And they're like, holy crap. And everyone's like, what's going on? And what like, about the tarantula? Hey, Does the tarantula feel it too? The tarantula <laughs> is not spider-based. He is named after a spider. <laughs> but also is probably dead in this reality because he is in most realities. Uh, we also have to deal with the smartest person what on the about planet. Black Widow? Black Widow also does not have spider powers. She's Damn not it. related. Why are there so many spider characters? Because Spider-Man sells. <laughs> also, Jessica Drew does not feel it. Also, Julia Carpenter does not feel it. <laughs> Who the hell is that? Also, Maddie Franklin does not heal it. Like, these are all spider women, by the way. So Lunella, the smartest person in the Marvel Universe, but also happens to be a little girl who is also the protagonist in a book called Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Yeah, okay. Uh, she is, like, noticing something, and she's like, crap, I gotta take this info to the second smartest person in the world, Reed Richards. So she hops on her dinosaur <laughs> and goes to the Baxter building. Okay. She can't call him? She could, but it's it's more urgent than that. I gotta bring my findings to him. So meanwhile, while that's happening, over in the X world, the psychics are also getting a ping mm. that things are going crabbed. As is Apocalypse, because 
He's old and his what? powers are many and varied and he can also feel the impending doom sure. or opportunity uh, for apocalypse. Oh. There's going to be an apocalypse, so I feel it. That's yeah. right. Every time there is an apocalypse, <laughs> apocalypse gets like a chill up his spine or a boner. It's like, Ooh. And he's like, yes. <laughs> Am I the cause? No? All right, I'll set this I'll, one out. I'll still take it though. Yeah, I'll take it. So Pete's like, all right, well, I'll go to the Baxter building because Reed probably knows what's going on. I'll, I'll get to the bottom of this. Would you like right. to take your crying daughter with you? She's I would, freaking out. I <laughs> would not. Lunella uh, and her dinosaur end up with the Fantastic Four, and they're like, whoa, things are happening. And then the Watcher shows up, and it's like, uh-oh, that's oh. bad news, because the Watcher is usually an indicator that things are going interestingly enough for him to warrant his attendance. Ooh. Anyway, don't pay attention to me. I'm just here to observe. <laughs> also, it should be our Watcher, but his eye got, his eyes got gouged out by Nick Fury and stuff, right. so, uh, you know, whatever. Also, he died. Uh, well, that's another universe. That's so. another universe, but also the Watcher Uatu should be monitoring all of the universes because he was the main character oh. in the What If series where he would be like, that's pretty crazy, but what about this? Right. Uh, that's why this isn't What If. Yeah. This is something else. This is not in the What If. I, no, it is. It's part of the Marvel multiverse. And we've just given up on Uatu being like a multiversal constant. Right. There are multiverses, there are multiple Uatus and Watchers, and they're watching. So I imagine that like there's a million Watchers and they're all watching a million million realities, <laughs> which must be exhausting. <laughs> so he's like, look, the Earth has hours, you're effed. Uh, and then he proceeds Who, to give context. For who's, what's the, going on. who's the young woman with the Fantastic Four? Oh, that's Valeria, their daughter. Oh. Yeah, Valeria is also one of the smartest people in the world. Ah. Oh, that's why she has a V. I didn't know for that. Five. Yes. Yeah. Well, also Franklin's on there, and he has an F or something. You know, like they have because oh. they don't want to offset the numbers because they're not oh, so really they're numbers. Still four. Yeah. And, and F is the sixth letter of the alphabet. Oh my God. It works. <laughs> Except, wouldn't he be the fifth? Wasn't he first? He was. Yes. Mm. Shit. Yeah, Valeria cut the line. <laughs> so. We meet this new character invented for the story, and look, Stan Lee did it in the last Fantastic Four story with the Adjudicator. Yep. That's fine. This guy was born 10 billion years ago, <laughs> and he's the unmaker, and, uh, you know, he unmakes stuff. He's a big, bad, stupid character that has no conscience or, uh, you know, personality. He just drifts around. He looks like a he looks like a bad guy because he is a bad guy. This is guy uh, cleverly titled the Unmaker decides one day a billion years ago or however long ago I'm gonna unmake everything and he bumps into the Living Tribunal and the Living Tribunal is like no, <laughs> right? And that's you can't that. make everything. But I want there to be a thing. Exactly. I like stuff. Yeah, I like stuff. I want. I got a lot of faces. They all gotta look at something, <laughs> uh, except for the one underneath my my shroud. But. Uh, he can't unmake the unmaker, irony of ironies. And so he takes the pieces of him that he couldn't unmake and he crams them into a newly forming world. And that world, of course, is planet Earth. Well, he's waking up and it's pandemonium in the center of the Earth. Much like what the fucking... Uh... Like Eternals, the movie. Yeah. 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 Well, the Eternals actually ripped off Earth X in that the Earth is a gestation egg right. for a celestial. This is more like... I crammed a corpse under the mattress that is the core of the Earth and I, hoped nobody would notice. I buried it on the most interesting planet in the galaxy. That's true. Well, look, when, when it was forming, we didn't have like mutants and marvels and stuff. So <laughs> Living Tribunal didn't know how important it was going to be. Now, and, and we don't go for the Earth X. There's also a celestial egg in there. Okay. The only thing that's celestial, and it's not technically a celestial, is the Unmaker who's in there. Right. And he's not really dead. He's only mostly dead which means slightly alive. And so he's waking up like a, you know, a few billion years later. Right. And so they're like, all right, well, we gotta go to the Earth's core and we gotta beat up this unmaker that the Living Tribunal couldn't have killed. Let's right. make a giant drill. Yes, and it becomes the core. <laughs> oh, come on, the fantastic core? Oh, Ben, you are spitting fire today, man. You just inspired some plucky young writer out there to give us something that is probably gonna be on the couch someday. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a drill just going through like, you know, the negative zone or something. Oh my God, it's a multiversal drill. It goes through all these different <laughs> oh. Earths. We're, we're going through, you know, each each like layer of the Earth that would normally be like, the mantle is like, is like no, it's 2099. <laughs> oh my God. Our Earth is made up of, it's like one of those, um, it, it's, like a, it's like a jawbreaker. Yeah. It's made up oh, of a million yeah. different Earths. And they're we like gotta get to the core. Superimposed on each other yes. in a multiversal way that this drill could access. Exactly. Oh my God, I love that. We're getting this. We're. <laughs> mm -mm. This is ours. This is, man, can you imagine pitching that? Fantastic core. You're like, what the what hell the does fuck? that mean? And it's like, well, 
Dude, they can introduce additional characters, so there's more than four of them, so they can be the Fantastic Core and oh, CEO yeah. of yes. RPS. Yes. yes. This is all coming together. <laughs> <laughs> so, in order to go to the core and deal with this thing that they now have all the context for because Iwatu broke a sacred oath, thank God. And uh, <laughs> Oh, I so, wonder how they figured that out. Yeah, okay. they formed their team, and the team is... The Vision and Scarlet Witch, because they don't go anywhere without each other, because you know, they're codependent. Uh, no, uh, did they because, even call them? Right, they, <laughs> they do. weren't here. No, they call them up on a screen. They're like, all right, everybody, here's the plan, and they and they keep everybody in the loop. But mm -hmm. here's who we get: we get the Vision and Scarlet Witch. Vision can interface with artificial life because that's technically what the Unmaker is. Oh. Uh, Scarlet Witch, she can un she can shape reality. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. she's pretty important. She's the uh, the Deus Ex Machina. Exactly. Uh, Sorcerer Supreme, Doctor Strange, he's gonna fight this thing mm -hmm. and uh, Sue is going to come too because she can protect them from the heat of oh. the Earth's core and uh, the thing will be there because we don't have an idea for the thing later in the story and we need him to punch something. I feel like <laughs> a thing made of rocks at the core of the Earth is a bad idea. Well, because you know that his rocks aren't as dense as whatever rocks are down there. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. Especially because they're organic rocks. And like molten. Yeah. So they go through a portal and they just get there. They don't have to drill anywhere. They just blink, oh, they're there. Okay. And so when they get there, the Unmaker is at its full form. It hey, is, look, there's space and, you know. There's room. Yeah, there's a big Air, I guess and, they can breathe. You know, well, the, the suit, tribunal. They brought air with them in the suit's bubble. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so the Unmaker's like, nah. So it like caves in a wall on them and they engage the Unmaker. Meanwhile, uh, while the Unmaker is like dicking around at the core of the earth that's causing uh, untold destruction on the surface uh, because he's like, you know, he's digging out portions and it's causing like shifts. Oh. And so Wakanda is having trouble. Uh, thankfully, they have like, you know, space alien vibranium technology that's protecting them, but it's still pretty bad. But meanwhile, you know, Kathmandu, Vancouver, uh, Atlantis, it's all just falling into the earth. That's right, Namor loses. Oh. Atlantis, and he's just helpless but to watch. I like Namor floating above Atlantis mm. as though the rest of them couldn't swim out of there either. <laughs> no, there was no time. No well, time. They, maybe no actual people died. They all floated out, but they're just, the buildings are being destroyed. Yes. Sad. Well, because Atlantis is a people, not a place anyway. Right. Uh, so well, Also, wasn't Atlantis already swallowed by the sea? <laughs> so now it's being swallowed Shouldn't by the earth? Prepared? It's just like, oh, jeez. Oh, man. It's, it's like adding city. insult to injury, really. <laughs> well, no, then there's going to be another, a new, new Atlantis. Oh, my God. Where it's Under like in the, the magma. No, it's and on fire the moon. People. <laughs> oh, even better. Yeah. What they do is they move to the moon and then they bring water with them and so they submerge the moon in water. <laughs> it's like a giant snow globe. Yes. It could be in a crater that you could fill with water. I love it, yeah. So we see that like the, the ground troops are just trying to protect as many people as possible from these natural disasters mm. that are taking place. Also, uh, Tom Taylor is showing his hand by being like, here are some characters that I want to deal with. Logan is not really a player in this book, and I want Wolverine in it, but I want it to be Laura. So it's female Wolverine and her clone sister, Gabby, who originally was uh, called the Honey Badger, and then they came up with another name for her that I do not accept. Honey Badger is her name, <laughs> because it's way better and cooler. And she she chose it, well, it actually was ascribed to her, but she embraced it. Mm -hmm. And there's this great sequence in real continuity where she imagines herself as the honey badger like that's her moniker yeah. uh -huh. and it's all these classic wolverine covers but it's her just this fucky <laughs> little wolverine girl and it's like honey badger in his font and she's like yes old lady honey badger <laughs> old lady honey badger oh i don't remember if that was one of them so the team goes for it. And, you know, uh, Ant-Man is giant man right now, trying to hold a building up. Mm. Uh, the Thing tries to punch the Unmaker, and the Unmaker lives up to his word and unmakes the Thing. That's oh. the end of that. Uh, it was not a battle, as they say. It was a slaughter. Wanda tries to unmake the Unmaker. Uh, the Unmaker is happy to spam this move and just unmakes Wanda. That's mm. the end of that. Uh, Vision tries to go into the Unmaker by using his phasing powers, which screws it up a little bit, but also he loses himself. The Unmaker's head is like the Roach Motel. You know, visions check in, but they don't check in. <laughs> so Doctor Strange uh, is like, we can't stop this thing. And it's like a machine. Like it's artificial life kind right. of. So the only way to, deep, to beat this thing is to hit it with an equally powerful EMP source. So Doctor Strange opens up a portal into a reality that is essentially just an unending EMP, just blasting 
okay. technology destroying rays from its own source of reality. And so uh, it goes in there and it, uh, it and it starts to F up the Unmaker. The Unmaker whips a piece of shrapnel and kills Doctor Strange. Oh. So that's done. But Holy crap. He's, Yikes. Well, that's just like from the movie. Yeah. We just, well, there's a scene where he puts spikes through him. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the Unmaker kills Doctor Strange by throwing some shrapnel through him. And he's like, live, Sue. And so he creates another portal and pops her out of it. He's like, get, get out of here. Mm. Because the open portal of EMP is going to stop the Unmaker. Right. Unfortunately, right. It's already EMP it in him. Yeah, exactly. Unfortunately, it is a unending, unclosable portal because now the guy who could close it, dead. Mm. And it's at the center of the earth. And the only guy who opened a portal that could get us there is also still dead. So come on, Wong, you can do something. No, he can't because Wong is not a sorcerer. <laughs> Wong is a guy. <laughs> he's cool and he's capable, but he ain't the sorcerer supreme. Anyway, so they open up this. So Doctor Strange inadvertently saves the Earth, but also plunges it into darkness because the Earth is now swallowed up by this steady pulse of EMP that is destroying all technology. Right. Huh. The Dark Ages. Yeah. Okay. And it's like blasting, radiating out. So like, don't go. If you have a spaceship, don't don't go near Earth, or right. you'll die. Also, right. sorry for everyone that is a pacemaker. Like this guy. Oh. oh really? Oh yeah. No artificial life forms like Viv, the Vision's daughter. Clang. Pacemakers done. People on life support out. And I love how in the narrative we do explore the really desperate, sad aspects of losing technology. If you have like any. Artificial parts, they don't work anymore. If you're mm -hmm. on artificial life, or if you need a pacemaker, you're dead. Heck, hearing aids. Hearing aids, you don't get to hear anymore. <laughs> and yet, they say at the end, like they're very hopeful about it, and they're like, we lost the world that we lived in, but we built a better one. And I'm like, no, you didn't. <laughs> or you did. You can't make pacemakers ever again. You, and they're not going to run on steam. You know, Doc Brown on your team. <laughs> but also, it maybe it is better, but it was born out of a baptism of blood. Yeah. EMP should mean that nothing electrical will work. That's yes, right. That's correct. So well, like, you no, you can, well, we can, we can approximate that. Yeah, they can't like use the Hoover Dam. It, like hydroelectrism doesn't work, but we're we're gonna have to like find another source to make mechanical things work. Right. Yes, which you could do steam power. Exactly. So that, and, I assume and that's like, why they have the steam pipes in the promos. Yeah. yeah, that works. Yeah, uh, certain gasoline engines will work. Probably, yes. yeah, not yeah. easily, but right. Well, it will. ones that wouldn't require a spark plug. Exactly. Right. So, exactly. Yeah. So uh, that also includes web shooters. So Spider-Man is trying to get home. Oh no! And the web shooters cut out, and he just plummets and just face plants into the ground. And he's like, "Oh crap!" And arrives at the building where his family is. Mm -hmm. It's collapsed. Oh. And Jessica and Luke are there, and they're like, "They didn't get out." And he's like, "Well, help me dig." And they're like, "For what?" Right. So they humor him, and they start to dig. And that's when they notice that one of the rocks underneath them is lifting, and little May has held the, the rubble away from her family. And so mm. Mary Jane and May and a couple of other people have survived. Oh, that's adorable. We go back and we see that the whole thing is being told like by the campfire. Mm. And he's like, yeah, you know, seven years ago, the world we knew ended, but a better one was built, and we're doing OK now. And you can see that he still has web shooters, but they run on bullshit. Uh, they're spring-loaded. They're spring-loaded. They're an airsoft web shooter. Precisely. So they're just, they're, they're just bigger. They're bigger, and they don't require electricity. Right. Which I don't think he really needed in the first place, but whatever. I'll give <laughs> Yeah, could he just, like, fling it really hard? Yeah. Well... I... But, unfortunately, from that did come the apocalypse. Because, of course, don't forget apocalypse. It's also fun because you're like, hey, we don't really get a lot of Marvel Universe versus Apocalypse stories, and so like let's do that. Mm. Uh, we also see the players in Apocalypse's army, which includes like a kind of venomized character, an Iron Man, She-Hulk, Beast, uh, Mr. Fantastic. What? Two weird Deathstroke people. Uh huh. So why is she? Neither of whom are in the uh, Marvel Universe. Why yeah. is She-Hulk on his side. I'm sorry. Why La indeed? Lady Deathstrike. Yes, Lady Deathstrike. That's right. Yeah, you, you said Deathstroke. I, I did. Yeah. <laughs> Leading up through the seven years, it was rough. And we see that you know there are some people who resisted the desire to follow heroes, including like Taskmaster and so forth. And we we had some casualties that we need to just kind of 
move along from like Hawkeye and it's this civil war essentially, but not like a Marvel civil war, <laughs> like a real one. <laughs> and uh, you know, people are just it's just it's just pandemonium, there's fighting, and then they're like, wait a minute, we have superpowers. And so like Jean and Professor X and the heroes involved essentially try to spread this message that's like there has to be a better way than this. And it we just cut to the quick into humanity's heart and go like, hey, let's stop it. <laughs> so they just change everybody. Everybody's mentally. mind. Yeah. Yeah. And and we see that I I think that it's a little more hopeful. It's a little less purple manny than <laughs> it is like more a realization of Charles's dream. Yeah. It's just like no, look inside yourself and realize that this is, should be the truth. And yes. everyone's like, oh, you're right. Yes. Yeah. We just made a really good argument mentally. Yes. <laughs> we didn't. We force accepted anybody. you. Yeah. We convinced you that <laughs> actually it's in you your want. best interest. Yeah. So we're good. Okay. Is Come this on, all your browser histories are erased. <gasps> it's time to start fresh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Is this, I'm, I'm confused by the timeline, is this, this after is, Apocalypse no. fought everybody or this is Apocalypse before Apocalypse? Apocalypse hasn't fought anybody yet. Okay. He's all just, right. we, we're, there's, we know it's going to. We know we're setting it up. Right. But okay. the, in the seven year interim, you know, it was, it was not all sunshine and rainbows. Right. It was hard for a little while. We lost Hawkeye. <laughs> uh, but then it became sunshine and rainbows. Right. And so, you know, we get to, we, we, we illustrate this by showing, like, Spider-Man You lose May. Hawkeye. He's, like, one of the people who doesn't use technology. I know. It's not fair at all. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I agree. But I think that the, the, the thing is, and Taylor is an expert at this, I killed everyone I don't want to play with or use right. or can or can die in a spectacular fashion. Right. Plus that's why like Hawkeye, we always lose a Hawkeye. That's right. That's <laughs> why Hawkeye gets stabbed in the back by Taskmaster. But also Taskmaster is killed by Hawkeye. So, you know, it evens each other out. <laughs> so we see that like they've they've built like a feudal Ultima Online-esque, <laughs> like, you know, society of wood and spires and gates. You can still use metal, guys. But but why? Why would we when we could build the Lord of the Rings? <laughs> well, why do you need walls? Roping bands. Keeping out? I'll tell you why. Okay. Because we have bigger problems in the Marvel Universe, and it's called vampires. Uh, they run rampant across the world. What? That's right. Let's say that you're in Cleveland, and the lights go out, and there's a small coven or whatever you want to call a collection of vampires out you're a vampire but yeah but that was you. always the case <laughs> light doesn't stop them no we got sunlight does but that's very true yeah i don't understand the sun's still a thing isn't it <laughs> yes it is yeah but there's no like ground to go to i guess it's like you know there's no infrastructure in place <laughs> i guess it's like no, no it doesn't it doesn't have anything to do with the light yeah. It's just that the world's wrecked, and yeah. so it gives an opportunity like, to I'm vampires. I'm metaphorically saying it's a coincidence that vampires I mean, don't it like is sunlight. darker, longer, <laughs> but it is, but but you know, they don't get killed by street lamp light. Right. So yes, you're right. <laughs> uh, maybe it's the fact that they, you lived in the dark ages. Yes. So they're used to this. They're right. Like, oh no, we yeah, we exactly. Adapt. I thrive. Right. Yeah. yeah. I just have to like go oh, back. I remember to my old how training. to do this. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I'll build a castle. Right. Exactly. I bet half these buildings were built by vampires anyway. <laughs> so uh, they also have a great system that I hate because they always do this. It was the linchpin of things like Minority Report and Civil War II and the current Krakoa X-Men period, where like, we have this flawless system that is completely contingent on fleshy meat bags called people that can die. You know, like, oh man, we've solved crime. Unless any of these three people get cancer <laughs> or will die eventually. Like, Cause it's gonna happen. You can't make legislation based off of human beings having magic powers yeah. if you haven't conquered death. Even in the X-Men Krakoa thing, they're like, well, you know, there's redundancies and stuff. Yeah, what about the guy who makes the eggs? You gonna get like <laughs> Mimic or Darwin to whip up some for you? Like, right, I, it's not self-sustaining. It's not. And so it is with this where they're like, well, we can't call anybody. But we have psychics in different strategic places throughout the world, and they all check in with each other. And I'm okay. like, great, so don't don't hire Deadpool to kill any of them. Right. Well, it's a very fragile system. It's entirely fragile, but they talk about it like, we look at this. We live in these dope castles, and we have, at the end of the night, and I don't see how they're all at nighttime, because they're all across the world, like Brazil and Wakanda and <laughs> Australia, but whatever. No, it's uh, the Dark Ages. So everything's no dark. dark. Yeah, it, it didn't affect the sun. It should. Yeah. Somehow. Right. So that that's why there are vampires everywhere. That's true. But no, it's just that 
we, I, I want to talk about vampires. Right. Why, Tom? I want it to be... I'll tell you why. Thematically, it's dope. Because I'm Tom Taylor, and I invented Deceased, and I set things up, but then James Tyne the Fourth showed up, and he did DC versus Vampires, which is just Deceased, but with vampires. And no, you don't take my lunch, okay? I will do Vampires again, and I'll give it to Marvel. <laughs> so anyway, and the psychics are all checking in with each other, and they're like, all right, we're good. That's it. And so that's how... That's how the world checks in with each other and like maintains a global community without technology. Exactly. Oh, it's a shame they don't have vision, because he could be the Martian Manhunter. Well, he would have he would have <laughs> died in the EMP. That's true. He could not survive. Yeah. Um, but they're all like, right. how else do we like protect ourselves? Because we have, you know, we we all the big brains got together, all the surviving ones anyway. You know, we thought we lost Reed in in the ensuing conflict, but obviously based on the apocalypse teaser, we didn't. But he's working for apocalypse for some reason. We'll get into that why. Yeah. Uh, and we'll get and we'll get into why later. But like Black Panther and Doctor Doom and Lunella and folks are all working together to like make things work. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got these like. Uh, chemical luminescence that are creating artificial lights for them because sure. apparently filament doesn't work. Right. Uh, but the fire works still, right? Yeah, they don't want open flames all over the place. You're Doctor Doom. Well, Doctor Doom has to work with a committee. It can't <laughs> all look like Latveria. Why do they just use gas? Great question. So the other way that they protect themselves is by building webs that, like Spider-Man and any of the other. Spider characters, mostly just May and Peter, because <laughs> Tom doesn't want to deal with any of the other spider people, despite the fact that we set them up early. Yeah, uh, you saw them all. Including at least two from different realities. And now we've established Miles as part of this reality in very disappointing retcons, but Gwen must have just gone back. Now, I don't see how, because her wrist communicator probably got fried unless she left immediately after feeling that spider sense problem. <laughs> I hope she did, because she's not in the story. Maybe so she anyway, died in the earthquakes itself. Yeah, she just panel. got crushed. We showed her as like an early warning detection system for the ensuing conflict and then killed her off panel with no fanfare or even a dialogue. No, no she went back to her reality to get help. Yeah, and, and got stuck there. And couldn't make it back. Good. So they build webs, that is to say probably Peter and May, and they like, they're, they're trip wires. Mm. And they have like night watches. It's, it is such fantasy. This is something for the people out there who think that if the lights went out, they would thrive. <laughs> Don't, don't like, yeah. dude. Oh, don't I'd figure it fly. all out. And what? Don't vampires fly? It no. Well, some on the of them vampires. do. Yeah. This is this is more of a like kind of twenty eight days later zombie equivalent of vampires, where they just kind of like run ravenously towards you. Oh, oh. like I am legend kind of. Vampires. Yeah. They, I mean, they they should also turn into mist or wolves or bats and stuff. But yeah. Like, we're but gonna don't we're, do that. forget it. Dracula does. Because Blade's yeah. here. Oh yeah, well Blade helped train this group of vampire hunters to deal with the ensuing vampire problem we now have. But the vampires tripped the webs and let everybody know, and we got Daredevil up in like a tower, like checking. Yeah. And so he lets the he lets the vampire hunters know what's going on. That includes Wolverine, Honey Badger, Elsa Bloodstone, and Blade. And Blade's having a great time. He's like, this is great. I don't have to explain myself to anybody. I can just hunt vampires all the live long day. Or night for that matter. So the vampires no, hunt them during the day. That's a much better plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the vampires and werewolves, like they engage. Oh, there's werewolves too. Oh, of course, there's werewolves. Yeah, yeah, werewolves. <laughs> when there are vampires, there are werewolves in a post underworld it, world. I don't understand. They're not fighting each other. I'm so confused. Well, or loving each other. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are loving each other. See, that's the team up. Well, I guess yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah, maybe they made like a blood pact at some point earlier. Right. They're like, but then if they did, then they'd be. The blue. humans are weak. If we if we work together, we'll yeah. inherit the earth. Right. And then kill each other because we'll be the only ones. Well, left. and then yeah, that we'll put aside yeah, we'll our run war out of food so yeah. we can take over, and then we'll go back. Exactly. Uh, meanwhile, uh, while the Wolverines and Blades and Bloodstones all like kill vampires and werewolves, we check in with Tony, who has basically set up shop in a cave with a box of scraps. <laughs> You know, he feels kind of bad because he's like, I should have come up with stuff. Like, I should have had like, what? you know, I internalize things. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, so he's like, so so Stark like kind of self exiles himself to a cave. He just works there. He's trying to like figure things out, and he's yeah. using like alchemy, trying to make things work. Oh, and he's trying to come up with a way like to turn the lights back sciences. on. Yeah, well, for, forbidden in as much as they don't work. It's not forbidden from logic. Real. Yeah. So non-science. So, exactly. So Stark's doing his thing, but then a vampire comes in and he's like, "Hey!" And then his head gets cut off by a vibranium shield. Captain America has returned from his pilgrimage out in Europe. Mm. He's like, "Hey, you think a brilliant inventor would uh, invent a door? It's just a cave opening. You just <laughs> let vampires walk in." 
they should naturally be here because this will protect them from the sun yeah, when it comes a, up. This is a place they'd really want to be. Yeah, yeah. You, this you really maybe. shouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like Stark's been here for a while. Mm -hmm. He makes a point about alchemy where he's like, uh, you know, I, uh, Captain America's like, how's it going? Like, turning the lights back on. He's like, well, I've made lead into gold. Like, that helps. Ha ha. <laughs> it's the joke. I've done what every alchemist has wanted to do for centuries. Right. And, and now it's worthless. And it's useless and worthless. And so Cap's like, look, Tony, I think I've got a solution. Like, let's take a walk. You and me, leave Pepper out of this. Let's, let's go Let's go walk and talk. So they go and they walk and talk. And we we, we, we establish that Iron Man did lose his leg in that free comic book day issue. Right. Uh, which is something that they don't ever point out. And it's something I didn't notice until, like, my third read on this. I'm like, <laughs> oh, hey, he did lose a leg. Shit. Because I really thought they just abandoned the free comic book day issue entirely right. and just did something else. And except for the leg thing, yeah. So well, there was a green glow. I guess that was the MP. The uh, MP, I guess. Yeah. No, it was the the green glow? I think was from the Unmaker. Well, yes. it's like he's like a suit of armor oh. with like green shit in it. Like right. he is the green vapor or or I guess or it was Alice. both. Well, yeah, the EMP the EMP is, is also green. green. You're, you're yeah. right. You're right. Yeah. No, it was the EMP. It had to be because he's flying around. It's just that. He wasn't involved in the conversation. I guess it does line up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it seems to mostly line up. Exactly. So... I guess we never have to worry about the Unmaker again, though. Problem solved! You kind of don't. <laughs> so, Iron Man and Captain America are walking and talking, and Cap's like, Look, I went to Europe, and I found a... I think I found a solution. I've just made a deal that'll keep the Empire out of here forever. <laughs> and so he reveals that uh, Dracula and Apocalypse are working together, and Captain America's working with them. Dracula and Apocalypse. That's right. Are working together. Yeah. Okay. Now Dracula is a long-established Marvel character. Right. right. And he has had multiple iterations. You know, sometimes he's blah, but other times he's like a, an anime character. And in this case, he's one of those. All right, I'm gonna make this work, because there's Captain America, Dracula, and Apocalypse. Yeah. So there, those four letters, you can combine to make ACDC, <laughs> which is electricity. That's true. That's. <laughs> Your mind works in mysterious ways, Ben. <laughs> you know, maybe we needed the lights to go out for Ben to really come into his own because you've you've solved so many problems today. Okay. Nailing it! I love it. Should, should I pr predict what's, what's Why going not? on here? Is this like actually the vampires no. are the good guys no. and they shouldn't be killing them because they have a plan to say? Absolutely. Okay. Not. No. In fact, they're like protected Apocalypse and Dracula by like an army of vampires and Iron Man just pulls out a grenade and throws it in the air and it blasts sunlight and kills all the vampires but Dracula because huh. Dracula's really fast and he has those kind of like misty powers. Yeah, he powers. can turn into yeah. mist. Exactly. So he just zips in behind him and he's like, I, I really needed those vampires but thanks a lot, dickhead. Anyway, gotcha. And then Cap knocks him out and then uh, reveals that Captain America's actually Mystique. And you're like, oh, uh, damn it. Okay, I get okay. that, but I also thought it was just going to be like under Dracula's thrall. Yeah, and there is thrall going on, and it's not necessarily Dracula's, but uh, we'll, we'll find that out later. Mystique okay. and the team grab Stark, and then they get into their portal that is made by Apocalypse, and they leave. Oh. So Apocalypse uh, brings Iron Man to his new kingdom in Europe. Right. In Europe. Europe. It's in France, because the Louvre is behind. Oh, the Louvre's there, yeah. Actually, the Louvre is their headquarters. Why does it just say in France? I don't know. Well, because Spider-Man's telling the story, and maybe he didn't know that he went directly to France. Maybe oh, there's like, oh, they yeah. went to the Louvre. That's in Europe, right? It's somewhere in Europe. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I wasn't there. And he sees, like, oh, my God, Reed is alive, and he's helping. And he's like, everybody thought you were dead. Like, your wife thought you were dead. Not like, and she totally banged the crap. She bangs <laughs> Namor every single day, sometimes three times a day. It's actually kind of obscene. It's like a meal. <laughs> yeah. She's got to have a three-course meal of fish, man. So Reed is acting like a kind of like puppet. He was like, I gotta, I gotta please end Sabiner. That's Apocalypse's real name. And uh, Iron Man has not been thrawed yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's, but he's powerless to help because he's just a dude. And uh, so they're like, this is interesting. You're in like this, you're in this bubble. There's electricity being conjured. Like, how do we do that? And Apocalypse is like, how would you do it? And he's like, I guess I'd make like a Faraday cage, but I'd need like an inordinately powerful magnet to do oh and at the heart of the faraday cage is magneto who is just left there just used con like to conjure his magnetism from the first x-man movie that's true that's true yeah so he's up there he's jabbed in there and they're like wait why would why would magneto even help you 
or or get this close. Right. And then we reveal that Apocalypse is working with Purple Man. Ah. Because he's popular right now. Eh, no, it's just more like, well, I think this is less use Purple Man for synergy, but more of an Emperor Doom. Purple Man is a great plot device for more interesting villain characters. You mm. know, Doom used him in Emperor Doom, Apocalypse using him here. Right. Well, so, he can control someone, so, like, that's pretty useful. Yeah, and he doesn't have greater aspirations, so let's just use him. Again, you have Dracula. Yeah, he could, bleh, yeah it's a little like, different, right? It is different. Is yeah. that only if I want to bite somebody? I don't know what the what the yeah I don't know what the conditions of the thrall are. I feel like the purple man's control is stronger than Dracula. Yeah, okay. like, I think that love seem can like break can you. Be more easily fought. Exactly. Against. We've established that purple man's control is like almost impossible to it's, break. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. Yeah. So uh, except for Doom, Doom can avoid mm. purple man's uh, thrall. Mm. All right, so they're just going the Tesla route. That's right. So the, all right, now you work for me. Uh, you want to work for me now because Purple Man's in your head and uh, help me get my shit going because I have a plan. See, when I felt the Unmaker awaken, I, I essentially touched minds with a god and I want that. Like I'm, I'm Apocalypse and I'm a badass, but I need to evolve to the next step. I need to become a god, the god that's laying dormant in the center of the earth. And I need electricity to get down there and get. Okay. So that's Apocalypse's plan. So there's nobody else in the Marvel Universe that can teleport? There are, but not to the center of the Earth. Ah. It's a hard place to get to, I guess. It is. It takes a lot of work. Like, he, like Nightcrawler can't, can't get no, there. No, he's also too busy being a swashbuckling seafarer. Oh. Because we want that. Right. Because I need to see that. <laughs> and you'll see. Is he doing that in this book? Yes. Oh. Of course. You understand? I'm using a sword. This is my natural habitat. It's on the open seas. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, I need my line of sight teleportation to really work when I'm just surrounded by miles of open ocean. Uh, so they're investigating the uh, kidnapping of Iron Man. Mm. You know, the, 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 the vampire. It's daytime, so now they have nothing to do. So they're working on this. Right. And uh, the Wolverine's like, yeah, it's Mystique. Damn it. All right. Well, Okay. And so Doom uh, ingratiates himself into the situation. He's just like, okay, well, if Apocalypse came in here, took Stark, and then left, he must have a plan. He must be working on it fast, and he's got Stark on his side, so we're screwed. Like, we gotta go to him, we gotta kill him. We, gotta, we just gotta fuck, kill him. <laughs> was right. Doom's armor never electrical? I thought that was part Oh, yeah, of it. no, it was. This is different armor. He was just like, oh, well, I have different armors. This is more. Right. This is my low tech armor. Well, this is, this is all ceremonial. Right. Like, I, I don't need it. Doom is more like, I don't need it. I'm, I am I have it. Yeah, it's not like it's keeping easier. me alive. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's just a metal suit. It's, they've had armor for thousands of years. Exactly. Or it's years. heavy and I don't yeah. need it anymore, but yeah. like, yeah, I do I do keep <laughs> it's it. It's not as cool as my old well, armor. It hides but... my visage. Yeah. I don't need anyone seeing my gross face. Yeah. And like, while I did use my armor to like flash people, like I have magic and stuff. I could flash people without the fucking right. electricity. <laughs> I didn't actually need that armor at all. Yeah, Doom actually, no armor, you no, woke no, me up. <laughs> Doing better than ever. <laughs> like, sure thing. Oh, yeah, I bet. All right, Doom. We got to go to Europe, and we got to go get Stark back. Probably kill him, because, you right. know, yeah, we, don't, we can't we, risk You don't it. actually need to get him back. You just need to kill him so he can't exactly. help. Yeah. And they're like, mm, I guess so, we should go to Latveria, which is over there. No, they're not going to go to Latveria. They're just like, all right, well, we're not going to let like send you, because you'll just kill everybody and probably take over. So <laughs> we're going to send people, and, uh, you know, uh, Panther's thinking about it, because he's kind of, like, in charge. He's like, look, let's send a recon. Hmm to glean information. Let's send Quicksilver. How do they know where to send him? Because they know that he's there. Like they know he set up shop in, in Europe. Europe. Oh, okay. So Quicksilver runs to Europe, immediately infiltrates the base, sees that Magneto's there, and gets all the information. But once he recognizes it's Magneto, Tom Taylor is smart and is like, um, that high evolutionary nonsense about like Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch not being, no. He is Magneto's son. Mm. Just like Spider-Man's married. Right. Just, all, you know, all, all the things right with the that world. I want. Yeah, yeah. All, exactly. Like, we're not going to give, like, like, Wolverine steal the show, okay? Unless it's cool female Wolverine. <laughs> and Honey Badger. And vampires everywhere. And vampires. Don't forget that. <laughs> vampires and werewolves. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my. Next to the heroes, the vampires are the strongest characters in the Marvel Universe. Exactly. So, naturally, they take over. Of course. Oh. What? <laughs> Your logic escapes me? <laughs> and it's like, listen. I wrote Injustice. At least the parts you like. 
and uh, Deceased, hello. Also, yeah. Dark Ages is dope. So you'll take the vampires and you'll like it. And you will think it's awesome. <laughs> Listen, it's really important that you accept the vampire thing, okay? Because it's like- It ain't going away. It's, it's the linchpin to my entire story. Okay. And if I was definitely gonna do my 12 issue mini about this, it would have taken a little more time to build towards it. Mm. But uh, DC offered me an exclusivity contract like while this is going on, and I took it. So um, by issue uh, four, I gotta wrap things up. <laughs> so he immediately just goes, hey, the end, yay, bye. Like just immediately abandons Tom, the whole guy. Tom, what thing. about your vampires and your <laughs> magnum opus? Yeah, it's over. My magnum opus is happening at DC <laughs> for like triplicate what I'm making. <laughs> so then he, uh, so Quicksilver is immediately like zapped. Right, because he was because distracted by the fact that he saw his dad. Yes, exactly. Right. And so they purple man him and they send him back. Ah. And so we have a speedster in our midst who is mind controlled by purple man. And so he immediately kills people like Okoye and the Human Torch. Oh. It, it, it happened in like a millisecond, right. you know, like Gene, got into his mind and turned him off, but not fast enough right. to save the Human Torch. Uh, Human Torch gets stabbed by a Wakandan spear stolen from Okoye. Of course, he would just die. But we gotta make this more dramatic. Uh -huh. So Human Torch is like, oh no! The fire the inside fire of me! The fire inside me! I'm going to go Nova! Because oh. I'm a robot or something. Like, it's not- Well, you right. know how Cyclops has like a-, a Punch dimension? dimension? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, so apparently there's just a dimension inside of Johnny that is just fire. <laughs> right, yeah. Right. No, that's his power. Yeah, my heart is actually a portal to a <laughs> fire dimension. <laughs> Mine's the sun. Oh, no, you, you've broken open the the walls of the chamber <laughs> by stabbing me through the heart. This is this is pure deceit. This is this is actually more DC than anything else because yeah. that's literally what happens. I think the firestorm. He's like, oh no, I've been oh, cut. Yeah. Bye. So he's like, ah, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna leave. And Sue, his sister, is like, I'm not going anywhere. And she holds him. She's like, you're not dying alone. Hmm. And so he erupts and dies. But Sue created a bubble around herself and the crew, so no one dies, and either mm. she doesn't kill herself, she just, she stays with him. Until so Quicksilver's recuperating in the hospital, or triage ward, whatever you want to call this like place in T'Challa's kingdom. Mm. Uh, but he gives them all the information. Okay, so Apocalypse, Reed Richards is there, he's alive. And Sue's like, okay, I lost my brother today. I thought my husband died, and also Franklin, but he's not really a factor, mm. uh, even though he would be, but whatever. Uh, but he's over there. And uh, now I know that my husband is alive, and so this is a this is a rescue mission, and I am at the fore. Right. No pun intended. And so. So uh, why is he no longer under Purple Man's control anymore? Oh, because Jean like turns it off. Oh, okay. She can she can do that. Yeah. So Apocalypse. Why can't she like, do that for Reed from a distance? Does she have to like physically see you? She'd to have turn to. Off? She'd have to go. It doesn't work that way. She couldn't like turn off, wait, oh, Jean? Yeah. Oh. Why couldn't she just think like, let me find Reed in the world. Okay, I just connected him from Purple Man. Yeah. Or at least or like- Or find Purple Man and kill Charles him. Oh yeah, it. just like, let me go to Purple Man's or mind and it. convince his heart to shut down. Because shut listen, I need to wrap this up fast, but not that fast. <laughs> right, that would be fucking lame. So Apocalypse is like, yeah, they're coming. They're on their way and that's fine with me. Isn't that right? character that we set up on the first issue but we don't have time to really develop anymore carnage venom character what? Blah. like yeah uh so who is it though is it carnage or is it venom it's both what does that mean <laughs> there's a guy in there right yeah it's, there's also another guy it's in a there. symbiotic foursome <laughs> yeah it's a threesome so wait you said there was another guy in there yeah there's a guy venom and carnage oh oh yeah i guess vent carnage is one yeah well, well yeah because well, carnage is but venom is a, there's a person in no, no. Just oh, the it's suits. the Venom symbiote. It's just the symbiote. And the Carnage symbiote exactly. and some guy. Okay. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, it's really disappointing. Um, <laughs> so we set up that we got to go to Europe. Uh, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to have to take a boat. Right. Thankfully, we have already, we, we now have established that they've retrofitted a helicarrier into a battleship. And I'm like, why didn't you just use a battleship? Because we want to see a helicarrier. And so what they've done is they use the helicarrier and they put sails on it. I'm like, wouldn't no. work. Why wouldn't you put a steam engine in it? <laughs> like ships used to use. Because we have storm for that. Because we need all of our infrastructure uh, to be completely contingent on a living being. 
<laughs> so Storm pushes the wind, the pushes the sails, the pushes the helicarrier through the ocean, and we can like collect refugees and bring them to you know society. Okay. I know the helicarrier is a boat, right. but I feel like without electricity, it should not it, float. It, it's right. Like, it wasn't it's too big to sink. float. Was it's it? Or like, maybe it was. It's hundreds of tons. No, it's it. Well, was it designed to like float and then like raise up yes, out of the water? It okay. can do all those things. Yeah. And it's captained by Nightcrawler, it's powered by Storm, and it's crewed by Jamie Madrox, the multiple man, who can make multiples of himself. So it's just an entire crew of himself. It's a crew <laughs> of three people, that's amazing. Exactly, and Colossus is there too. Question of. about multiple man. Yeah. Oh, they all op operate independently of each other. Okay. They're not like It's not like one guy doing simultaneously one doing like 30 things. No, or in actually fact, like 1,500 things. That's right, yeah, no, it is, <laughs> he makes multiples they are all distinctly different multiples. Right. And then they all return back to him. In fact, there's a there's Do they old, have to return back to him? They they have, and some of them have not. There's one like old X-Men story from like the 90s in which like a multiple man does not get absorbed and he has like a relationship and it's like really complicated. And then gets absorbed. And then she's still in love with him and she talks to multiple man about it. She's like, I'm in love with you. And he's like, she, don't you remember it? And he's like, I know about it. Because I absorb the information from the multiples, right. but I don't feel it. That ain't me. That right. wasn't me. It was me, but like right. not this me. Well, the reality is, I'm tens of thousands of people now. Yes. <laughs> so I can't feel. I can't that love was just you. One, They're one all banging somebody. I am. Yeah. So, <laughs> I can't actually love anybody. No, it's <laughs> it's really complicated. <laughs> it's true. So we see that Storm and T'Challa are married as they should be, and they have a kid as they should because they were gonna have a kid, and that was in the plan in the comics. And editor editorial was like, "Oh, that ages Storm. Like anybody gives a rat's ass about <laughs> oh my that." God. And so we meet Storm's daughter to no effect. It's just this is Taylor being like, "I want to check a couple of boxes about things that I have a problem with in the Marvel universe and right. things I would like to see." Yes, this is the way it should be. Draw it. Make the readers like it, and then make problems for editorial later, because I'm leaving <laughs> goodbye. Hey, what about Storm and T'Challa's kid? Yeah. Yeah, we what about that? Her? We crew the helicarrier. We also established that Nick Fury Jr., or Ultimate Nick Fury, you know, it's... Right. In Nick this, Fury Jr. <laughs> <laughs> he's the character from Samuel L. Jackson as yep. Nick Fury. In the Marvel Universe, in the main Marvel Universe, it's Nick Fury's son. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Uh, but he's here and he's like, you know, he he needs to be in this now. He wasn't in the last four issues, but he is now. And he and Nightcrawler can hang out because they both have eye patches. That's true. They uh. both, yeah, and if they put their powers combined, they can have depth perception. <laughs> so uh, basically they're like, look, I know you just got here from like a pilgrimage out like into the world, but mm. I need you to turn the ship I around. I need your and, boat. Yeah, I need you to do it again. Right. And they're like, it, it takes a lot. Storm uses all of her powers to do that. And they're like, yeah. Sorry. No, sorry. And no one's like, she's an Omega level mutant. Isn't there like no upper limit to her powers? Couldn't she have like, whatever. So uh, Yeah, but she doesn't want to. She's a human being and she needs to freaking sleep and eat and stuff. So they, they get their can't, crew together. Can't they just have multiple men like just get a whole lot of oars and power Yeah, around? they could do that. Then they have, a, they have one multiple man that like mans the drum to oh, keep the pace. Yeah. And then they start like having a fight like, hey, how come that one gets to beat the drum and we all got to pull the oars? Yeah, there's a mutiny of himself. <laughs> All right, that's it. Everybody back inside. <laughs> we'll do this again later when I forget about it. Pete's like, we can't take Mary Jane or my kid because it's a, it's death mission. I don't want you to die, so stay it's here. It's a death mission? A suicide mission? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, maybe. Stay here on this unsinkable ship. Yeah, well, nobody says that. <laughs> so they get on their ship. Uh, Nick Fury Jr. and Peter have a relationship that they, like, set up in this now. Uh, you know, they were rapport. He's like, hey, Peter, oh, yeah. good for you. You know, I'm like... Oh, okay, they're friends now. Well, it's been seven years. Right. Anybody could be friends. Sure, of course. But, like, why do I care and why did you do it now? <laughs> right. Well, you, didn't, you didn't build that or establish that. Exactly. Yeah. You didn't really so, like, they, like, we're fighting at the beginning of the book. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, everyone's, like, kind of talking to Dr. Doom. And Dom Doom's like, all right, now that we've got you on the ship, the plan is we're going to murder everybody there. Sorry, we're not rescuing anybody. And they're like, all right, sorry, Doom, you're outnumbered. And right. don't start. And he doesn't start. They don't like go, okay, now we're gonna have a big fight. Right. Because they're screaming on the deck. And so they get up top and it's Danny and May, they stowed away because it's cute. You know, we gotta do that. <sighs> okay. And uh, May is upset because her spider sense is going off. Oh. And Pete's, Again? Yeah, and oh, Pete's no. like, uh-oh, mine too. And they look out at the open ocean and they see nothing. And then a harpoon blasts through Nick Fury's chest and he is 
taken. Oh, why? He and Peter just made up. They, they didn't they make just up. Be, well, they, they just became friends. We just established they've been friends for years. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's sad. Yeah, he's been taken by Ghost Raiders. What? You know Ghost Rider? God yeah. damn it. Ghost Raiders. These are Ghost Rider pirates. How? What? Oh. How does that work? How can you have multiple Ghost Riders? Oh, Mephisto can make as many Ghost Riders as he wants. And that's, the Spider-Man narrates and explains, uh. when the world went dark and powerless, adrift pirates made deals with the devil to blaze brightly forever, and they dragged thousands to their deaths since then, and victims drowned and burned at the same time. Why? Because like, oh. Mephisto's like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but why wouldn't that happen all the time? Oh, if Maybe anybody could just do that, right. and you're going to have like hundreds of ghost well, riders, you should have a thousand ghost riders. There should be a million ghost riders. Because I think it Mephisto, damned your soul. Well, yes. And Mephisto probably is like, well, I don't want you to be a ghost rider. Like, you're lame. I, don't, I, 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 can't, I can't have fat ghost riders. I can't have like children ghost riders. All I, right. Uh, it says here that um, you can chug a beer in 12 seconds, Chad. <laughs> how, do, how does that make you a better ghost rider? I'm a little confused by this. Well, you know. I'm just willing to sell my soul. I'm also, so, uh, I don't know if that says it on there, but I've also seen The Office at least five times. <laughs> I could quote every episode. I okay. Quote every episode. That's got to be worth. Okay. I've did watched Scott's watch, Tots. Did you watch the entire series? Yep. Whole thing. Okay. That disqualifies you because the last season was garbage. <laughs> Listen, the last th three seasons were garbage, but I still watched them because I commit. Look, I'm dog. I fucking commit. That's what I'm saying. Look, Brew Dizog me right now. I can team wolf this bitch right now. <laughs> anyway, so Ghost Raiders, it's just to see pirate Ghost Riders. Right. Also, great name. Ghost Raiders, no notes. No, that's cool. When they get on the ship, does the ship get engulfed in flames? No. Ah! <laughs> oh! Well, because they don't get on the ship. Uh, instead, Colossus fastball specials Gabby and Laura into, you know, uh, the Ghost Raiders, and they, they engage them. But like, Oh, there's literally a flaming pirate ship coming at them. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on board now. <laughs> it's cool. My problem with things like this is like, what, but that Why doesn't they do this really. That doesn't logically follow from the, this apocalypse, right? Yeah. Like, there's something about the world going dark that would logically well, result no, like, in pirate I, ghost riders. I, I get, no, it is because like normally, as opposed to any other apocalypse, because you have because because <laughs> you this need a vessel. Listen, this presupposes the idea that there are real pirates and not just like the pirates that we see in real life, right. like because they're they're seafaring swashbuckling pirates. Right, like they're teleported from like the 1800s or something. Yes, and that's not what happened, but that's how they're treated. They right. look like Captain Hook. Like they look like swashbuckling, or I'm Captain Jack Sparrow pirates. Well, because all pirates love Those that depiction of pirates. And yeah. they're like, that's what that's I want to be. That's, that's, well, Mentally, that's what I am. And that's why they took the deal with Mephisto. Right. Well, like, it's to inspire fear. Yes. Yeah. Well, well plus people love those pirates. Sure, I use an AK-47. Oh, yeah. But if I was back in those days, I would use a sword. Or a cannon. And yeah. this guy, one of them uses a chain gun. <laughs> Which shouldn't be oh. working. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a spiritual chain gun. You know, it's yeah, a, this a is hellfire a, this chain is, gun. Yeah, this is a chain gun of vengeance. Yeah. So, <laughs> look, just just like it, okay? It's cool. It looks cool. That's what, these, that's what they'd say. That's what yeah. the comments are saying right now. They're like, yeah. why does anybody care about the, the, the meta workings <laughs> of the... Because, you know why? Because you, it, you put such a bug up your ass about it. Yeah, no, you know why? Because the Ghost Riders have a storied history <laughs> and there is an explanation for every single one of them. Right. Like, when I... When, yeah, when there is like a fraternity bus fire, why isn't there just a group <laughs> of meathead ghost riders? Also, my soul does not die. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, me too. Yeah, let's follow Chad. We'll all be ghost riders. No, Mephisto is selective in his desires for ghost riders. Right. For whatever reason, he you only wants what? there to be one or two at a time. We've established that. I know why. It's because every time he makes one, they turn on him. Yeah, it backfires. I don't need right. a dozen ghost riders all realizing that they miss their humanity. Oh my god, no, that's perfect. Yeah. You choose the boneheads. No, yes. no pun intended. Of course. But yeah, no, you get them because they won't betray you. They won't betray Mephisto. He's like, you're dope now, forever. Yeah, sweet. Let's right. do so, this. So I guess that they exist now because he just never thought of that before. Right. No, that's, Until the apocalypse. that's the problem is it breaks ghost riders because now... Well, why aren't they in the main book now? Right. Like, why don't you then establish Ghost Raiders as right. a book? Because people die all the time. Right. Yeah, <laughs> we're not, like, we, we don't have a moratorium on moratoriums. Uh, there's an infinite supply of souls it's, that could be converted, turned into Ghost Riders. Yeah, it's not like there aren't a lot of people that die at once 
the reality is, you know why we have such a problem with it? It's because we've never seen it before, and it doesn't necessarily jive with the way we understand Ghost Riders to be. Right. But it also does work. Right. It but works, it works too well. It works like thematically with the 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 story, the title of the book, which implies a regression to the past. Precisely. Where pirates we associate pirates being. Yes. There's also a moment moving off the Ghost Raiders for a minute. <laughs> Hang on. No, we have to go back because I suddenly realized they were surprised at this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. They're looking at There's out. literally a ship on fire yeah. off of their well, remember, oh, port was side. Yeah, but remember the, the it's probably it's but remember it's hellfire. So it's probably under the water. Like they fired mm. it from under the water yeah, and then, then they just come up out of the water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but they're not close to it. Yeah, but that they, helicarrier is huge. That's where the ship is. They nail Nick Fury from there? Yeah. Well, look. Well, no, from underwater. Yeah, and they shoot also it from they under have, the surface of the water up through him. They're made of chains and stuff. Like, that's an unending chain. That's a, that's a six mile chain yeah. that he fired and then took Nick Fury with. Yeah. Uh, I should also point out that uh, when, the, when the electronics turned off, that also includes, like, switches. Like, for example, Giant Man switched to turn back into a regular person. So he's just giant all the time. Oh, right. Isn't it a chemical? Can you just, like, yeah. eat it? So, uh, <laughs> anyway, as they are engaging the Ghost Raiders and Nightcrawler's like, I'm going to teleport onto their ship and get Nick Fury back. Mm. Uh, Thin Fang Foom oh. rises from the briny deep. Back? He has an harpoon through his through his chest and his heart. He's uh, dead. Exactly. He's not, and uh, but he will be. So, Thin Fang Foom <laughs> blasts out of the briny deep, ridden by Giant Man. Uh. <laughs> That's cool. They're the guardians of the port. They like protect the the, the oh. you know the, the shipping lanes. I freaking love that. Yeah. All right. So the ghost rider, ghost raider pirates are their natural enemy. Exactly. No, we have our giant riding a dragon to deal with our ghost raider problem. And so <laughs> Giant Man instructs Fin Fang Foom to fire upon the ghost raiders and just blast them, then crushes them. This shouldn't kill them, and it doesn't, but like they go away for the rest of the book. You they are defeated. Ride, man. They are defeated. Nightcrawler teleports back onto the deck with Nick Fury, and they're all really sad. Right. And I'm like, you just established him in this issue. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so yeah. he dies, and then they bury him so, uh, in Portugal, where they land. Uh, yeah. You were at sea. Just bury him at sea. Yeah. No. <laughs> they just don't. <laughs> they just keep his corpse around well, for the like days that it takes to cross the Atlantic. Yes, we could have a sequence where everyone lines up on the deck and just like you know remits his body to the to the sea. But instead, we have that on land, and that's the only difference. Right. Uh, also, Deadpool set up shop in Europe, and he is going to be their liaison. Why? Because Deadpool's in the book now. That's why. Because we're at issue five, and Tom is moving. I haven't seen any cracking jokes anywhere. Yeah. We got Peter Parker in this book, and like, Well, he's a dad no now. Quips. He's boring, so we got to get Deadpool in here. Also, I'm like transmitting all my files from my Marvel address to my <laughs> DC address, so uh, I got to wrap this up. Yeah, uh, D Deadpool. Deadpool Dead shows up. Uh, he's Dead in Europe. He writes. He, writes he, he was in Europe when it happened. Yeah. So everyone said, I love like Nick Fury is dead and Deadpool's like, whoa, what's going on here? Is there a funeral or something? Who died? And then uh, Laura's like Nick Fury. He's like, oh. And I'm like, what? Who cares? Yeah, why would why you does Deadpool care, about care Deadpool? at all? But it's just like he goes, he's one of the good ones. That's sad. And you're like, okay, I guess we needed a scene where a character could die, but and I guarantee you it wasn't going to be Fury, but Taylor's like, I don't want to kill a character who is beloved because I'm not going to be on the book long enough for us mm. to actually enjoy that death or really feel bad about it. So let's kill off a character I introduced in the same book that I killed him in. Right. He's one of the good ones. I really loved Deep Blue Sea. <laughs> if only he'd been eaten by a shark. <laughs> and a, a, a ghost raider riding a shark. So it was a oh. flaming hell shark. That would have been great. So Apocalypse and his, tr and his crew uh, teleport to um, the Unmaker. Ah, oh, they're doing it. They're doing their plan. Yeah. Oh, they have Tony now. Yeah. Right. That's okay. right. Uh, well, because Stark has an issue. That were they, were they always able to teleport there? Oh, yeah, they could. The oh. problem is I need to be able to do what I want to do right. with this Unmaker that I'm keeping close to the chest. And Stark's having an issue, so I need to bring him to the Unmaker to show him the Unmaker so he can figure out what problem he needs to crack. So they go to the Unmaker and it's kind of like sitting there. Uh, I love how they're walking past Doctor Strange's corpse because like it's in the middle of the earth, like no one's been there, so Strange is d dead and he's just been like rotting away. Yeah. And, like don't touch it. 
it's still got like magic in it. Like, I mean, I'm glad it's rotted. It's not like preserved. No, yeah. but I like it. He's like, they're like, don't touch him. He's still got magic crackling through him. Uh, well, yeah. Didn't he have like defenses and things? He should. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't really come up. Apocalypse is like, I need you to turn on the power to the earth for like an hour. Like I need you to stave off this thing for an hour. They're also next to the yeah, portal for the EMP. Yeah. Never is the plan, close the portal. That's the first plan. <laughs> right. Get a magician, a sorcerer, a troll to close it. Like anything. But they don't. Uh, instead, they're like, we got to figure this out. We're going to figure out how we're going to use our Faraday cage to incorporate this blah, 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 to make the flabbity flu, uh, you know, reverse the polarity. <laughs> we have to make it all sciencey. Uh, yeah. Right. Well, they uh, Apoc Apocalypse doesn't care about turning the power back on, right? Well, he wants he, them, he needs them to do it in order for him to do what he needs to do. Uh, but he also needs something with this Unmaker. Oh, well, his, well, he touched the mind of the Unmaker and realized that like, that's the next stage in evolution, which is ironic because, of course, it's 10 billion years old, so it's actually de-evolution, but whatever. <laughs> uh, he, he, wants, he wants what the Unmaker's got. In order right. to go forward, I have to go back. That's right. right. Stark takes it as a challenge, and he's like, all right, well, I'll figure this out. I'll figure out how to turn the power back on for an hour. Okay. Only for an hour. To like block the portal or whatever for an hour. Exactly. Yeah. So Give me a giant cork. <laughs> don't you need a sorcerer? You, Isn't it a magic portal? It is a magic portal. Give me a magic cork. But the issue is we're not trying to close the portal. We're just trying to turn the power back on in spite of the portal. So everybody gets onto a uh, tour bus that's driven by Deadpool. And uh, Deadpool like brings them across, you know, wherever the hell. Uh, Europe. Uh-huh. And, uh, <laughs> you know, just all of Europe. Well, they were in Portugal, so I guess crossing Spain? Sure. Uh, so they park for the night, they bed down, uh, and then Wolverine gets attacked by the combination of Venom and Carnage and Miles Morales. That's who the host is for oh. the Venom-Carnage oh. combo. Oh. I know. Uh, so Venom and Carnage, like... Is Jean there? Just turn him off. No, she's not there. Uh, so Venom and Carnage attack, they, they, they wound Devil Dinosaur, uh, Spider-Man attacks Miles, and then uh, Pepper in the Iron Man suit like blasts the Venom-Carnage-Miles combo with fire. Mm. So the fire pushes the Venom and Carnage symbiotes off of Miles, and then Storm brings down the lightning and kills the Venom-Carnage symbiotes. Oh, nice. So now Miles is free. And Miles has been working with Apocalypse, so he's able to shortcut us even further to the last chapter of the story, where he's like, this is how Apocalypse is going to end the world. Well, why do they, how do they sever his connection to the Purple Man? <laughs> Apocalypse promised them that he would send them in a rocket off Earth. Like, that oh. they would, he would send them is that away. What, that's what they always wanted? They can go rejoin yeah, I guess the for other new Clintars. planets. Right, they can go back and, and, and team up with Null. There's no explanation. It's just that they wanted to leave. Right. And I think it's because Taylor wants to make a reference to an awful cartoon show called Spider-Man Unlimited. And this is a Spider-Man cartoon made in the 90s. And so Spider-Man gets on that rocket ship as well, and he goes to counter Earth. And so he's dealing with the human resistance led by John Jameson uh, and fighting Lion and Ram people <laughs> and also Venom and Carnage, who are but never would ever in their lives work together. Okay. Because they hate each other. Because they hate each other, but in this they don't. And so they yeah, just... Because wouldn't it be badass if they worked together? Oh my God. That's actually cooler than if Spider-Man and Venom teamed up to fight Carnage. Wouldn't it be and great so... if they were just this mishmash, creepy crawler thing of red and black? Yeah. Yeah. And so in this they are. Right. And there's no explanation for why they don't hate each other. Uh, so the idea is that in the past, like when the lights go out, uh, Miles... Uh, Eddie died or something. Who cares? But like the Venom symbiote's alone and it's scared and it finds Miles and the two of them made it work for a little while. But then the Carnage symbiote came and that was it. And I'm like, what, what do you... What, <laughs> what do you mean that was it? What do you mean that was it? And he's like, who cares? I'm Stop. busy. Go I have Raiders. to stuff. <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm, I'm gone. This issue's already out and I already left. Right. Uh, but no, the Carnage symbiote came and now I've got these two voices in my head that are crazy symbiotes and they're talking and they like just completely took over and I lost myself. Right. So now I'm just, I was, I was a hopeless, helpless captive of these two crazy aliens and Apocalypse used it up. Cool. 
That's it. I couldn't right. get a word in edgewise. Nope. Right. That's right. I've been I spent well seven years trying to interject myself into the conversation, and then thankfully, because uh, you burned me and you blasted them with lightning, I can finally say something. And and what I'll tell you is what you need to get here. So they're like, all right, well, we need vibranium. Uh, Stark is like, I need vibranium and I need adamantium, pure adamantium. So they take Cap Shield and like, all right, we got the vibranium. Now what are we gonna do? And so they go into the caverns of the Louvre where they've been keeping- Did they explain where they got Cap Shield? No. And so, uh, well, they defeated Captain America. They, they, they Yeah, off panel? Yeah, well, yeah. like years ago. And they, you know, they took him, you know, Mystique- That's why Mystique had his shield. shield. Yeah, that was actually a shield. Yeah. That was not like her arm morphed into a shield. <laughs> uh, but Cap is also under Purple Man's thrall. He's not really useful because oh. he's not smart like the rest of them. But he was there and he worked with them. So oh. Cap's here too. Oh. He's incredibly useful. He's a team leader. That's true. He's like, all right, Although guys. Apocalypse is probably just like, ah, oh, there's one team yeah, leader. Yeah, we don't exactly. need that team, team Thank yeah. you. No, I can get them. He's I got a big A on his belt buckle. For America. No. no. For me. <laughs> so Wolverine, Logan, has been kept in the catacombs of the Louvre for just th th this kind of situation. Ah. So like, yay, we got Logan. Just as a supply of adamantium. Yes. So uh, Apocalypse and Purple Man and Cyclops go down there. They teleport down Cyclops there. Cyclops is there too? Oh yeah, Cyclops is there too. And he was also taken over. And uh, <laughs> so they make him blast Logan into adamant an, an adamantium skeleton. Ah. So that's that. He's dead now. Like, oh, Wolverine's dead. Oh, he's dead. But, you know, well, Cyclops apologizes. You legitimately have Magneto upstairs. He could just pull it off. Yeah, but he's him. running the Faraday cage. I can't, like, I can't remove him from that right now. I can't do that for two minutes. Right. Well, if I if I stop doing that, then he might fight me. Yes. And well, he's, also, he's strong, so. also, well, I could use Purple Man to do oh, that. Oh, that's but, true, yeah. But uh, we already did that in Fatal Attractions. And while we could do a Greatest Hits... I also want to have a like totally badass and cool narration about why the concussive blast of Cyclops would kill Wolverine, even though they haven't and never would. And it's because <laughs> Wolverine's bones were coated with adamantium, but everything holding them together, the muscles and tendons, not so much inspired. So it's gonna take a little while for Iron Man to get this Wolverine skeleton and Cap Shield to, <laughs> and so <laughs> let's let's go do that. Meanwhile, Doc Ock has been working with Apocalypse, and he has like a steam-powered tentacle situation going on. And uh, so he's like, oh, Apocalypse, can I have a word with you? No, he'd be dead. Yeah. So he he goes outside with Apocalypse, and uh, they're chatting, and he's like, listen, uh, there's a little hole in your plan about like, you know, dealing with the Unmaker. And he's like, what's that? And he goes, well. Like, I can't guarantee... He's going to unmake you. Well, he's like, he's like, the problem is, like, if you go down there and you, like, tap into its power source, you won't be able to have enough power to teleport out. And the only way out is if you break the planet apart. And Apocalypse is like, yeah, what's the problem with that? And Doc Ock's like, I live here. <laughs> and so he is ripped in half by Apocalypse and uh, moving on. Pocus can rip you in half? Sure. And, uh, well, Doc Ock, anyway. He's just some fat guy. But he doesn't touch him. No, he uses his powers. Oh, okay. Which are many and varied. I see. So the good guys arrive in Paris. They leave the kids on the bus, and they go and engage the bad guys. Uh, Storm, uh, like, you know, knocks by blasting some lightning, and then they all, like, Apocalypse sends his bad guy team to fight the good guys. And, of course, the bad guy team is made up mostly of good guys who are under Purple Man's thrall. He's there, too. And, uh, oh, we used Captain America's shield, but Cap needs a shield, so we made another shield for him. But it's not vibranium anymore. Yeah, it's just metal. Yep. Why didn't we bring Jean Grey right, to, to turn deal with this off. scenario? Well, because I wanted this. I see. And so they fight. If you wanted it, why didn't you kill Jean at some point? Right. right. Take her off the table. Yeah. yeah. So that you can't do so it. So that, that well, I wouldn't I, be asking this question. I did take her off the table. She's not with them. <laughs> She's guarding the base. Yes. So Purple Man is okay. like, yeah, now kill them all. And then Deadpool just shoots him in the head and he dies. Huh. And like Jessica Jones is like, hey. And Deadpool's like, ooh, I probably robbed you of some kind of catharsis, didn't I? My be Hilarious. <laughs> but uh, at least it's over. Yeah. At least it's over. So now we've got- That's like, why we had Deadpool in the book. Yes. So we can kill Purple Man easily and quickly. That's right. That's right. Well, because I need to wrap this up. Yeah. I only have three more pages to go. On this massive event. Pages? Yes. Holy shit. Okay. So Apocalypse is going to <laughs> and get down there and use the Unmaker to essentially merge with the Unmaker and then unmake everything. 
and uh, so that so he can't reach the machine or the <laughs> to do it. And so, uh, and he's like, what the hell's going on? It's because Sue Storm created a invisible bubble around him to keep him from being able to interface with anything. And so Nightcrawler teleports onto Apocalypse and takes off his armor, which I guess was important. And I was like, really? I just thought he wore it for show, but whatever. So he takes off the armor. So Dracula, who they made a deal with off panel, uh, appears behind Apocalypse and bites him. So now Apocalypse is a vampire which is significantly less powerful than Apocalypse. <laughs> but wouldn't he be an Apocalypse vampire? Yeah, he should yes, have he would. his powers, but also be a vampire. Yes, and all of a vampire's weaknesses. So Dracula oh. is like, I've got you now, you son of a bitch. Like, you're mine. And he's like, just standing behind him like, yeah. And then Blade jumps onto Apocalypse and stabs him in the heart with a stake and then pulls out his sword and chops off both Apocalypse and Dracula's heads. <laughs> Okay. That's why we have vampires in the book. So we could have a sunlight grenade which travels at the speed of light. Oh yeah, no. And Dracula just... knows to turn into mist. Right. But when Blade jumps in with a stake and a sword, oh, too slow. Well, he was surprised. Yeah, he wasn't. He just that. eaten. Right. He was lethargic. He was actually kind of like in euphoria. You know, I, I don't right. bite apocalypses every day. Yeah. Yeah. I was... Okay. So. So, it... so that's that. So is it that Blade wouldn't be able to defeat Apocalypse Without, normally? That's right. If he stabbed him through the heart with a stake, yes, it, it just wouldn't hurt him. It would it would hurt him, but it wouldn't kill him because Apocalypse is much more powerful. Plus, Apocalypse inherited vampiric right weaknesses. weaknesses. I see. So, but shouldn't he also have his own strengths, which oh, yeah. presumably include like not being able to pierce him with a friggin' stake? Yeah, but then you don't have this really fun like holy shit moment where Blade comes in. And is useful. Oh, that's true. And okay. so, so uh, what is the deal they made with Dracula? Oh, whatever. You know, how you, did they? Oh, they're like, oh, when did they talk to him? How did that? After the after Purple Man was killed. Oh, because he was with the bad guys. Oh, that was not in the same room where Apocalypse was. No, no. Apo oh. D Dracula is part of the team that Apocalypse sent to go kill the heroes oh, I see. and keep them from coming in the room. Right. Okay. So. Now they're beaten, and uh, you know people reunited. Pepper and Tony, uh, Reed and Sue. Uh, uh, Nightcrawler teleports up into the Faraday cage and pulls Magneto out. Now he's free and he's good. Well, what was the whole thing with uh, Iron Man was going to turn off the EMP for like an hour? Yeah, no, we, we didn't have to do that anymore, and we're never well, going to. Then why'd you even bring it up? Because the book was going to be longer. Well, uh, clearly, That's why, because the book was going to be six more issues. Oh my God! I mean. There's no, there's, there's nothing to support that. There's nothing to say well, that it wasn't going to be six issues. Other but, than this rush job. But watch this: Blade kills Apocalypse and Dracula, Iron Man and Pepper Potts hug, and then they all walk off into the sunset together. It's three pages. <laughs> Don't tell me this was always going to be six issues. You took the exclusivity deal with DC and you left. Yeah. You were like, I get, I mean, like, look, the reality is most of my books thrive on decompression. But I could tell the whole damn story in like three issues. <laughs> like, because we spent a lot of time in the first three issues just establishing this world yeah. and, 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 and building tension. Like, we need to establish that, like, our feudal society is supported by a system of webs yeah. that are triggered by vampires. And, and then there are Daredevil little, like, in a bell tower. And little then, castles everywhere. Yeah. And then Force. Apocalypse gets bitten by a vampire, and then, blah, 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 and then we're, yay! <laughs> yeah, uh, never mind. Any of that. The, what, what about the sea scene with the Ghost Raiders? Right, like, we killed Nick Fury. We set up Nick Fury and then kill him. We got Ghost Raiders. Like, why do we waste all that time on, like, a Nick Fury funeral scene that we didn't need when we could have just killed literally any member of the team that would... But he, but he needed all of them. He was like, I need Blade to kill the bad guys at the end. I need Sue to be able to, like, get the bubbles. And also, she's kind of, like, the, our, our secondary protagonist. Yeah. And I need, you know, like, Nightcrawler to teleport... Uh, around. Well, That's when you could have killed Gene. Yeah, Gene could have gone with them and you killed Gene, but then like you would have had a Phoenix thing situation. You know, uh, <laughs> we could have killed Storm, but she needs to do the lightning. We could, like, there's a lot of characters we could have killed, but I guess not because it really wouldn't have it wouldn't have worked. Like we could have killed one of the Wolverines, but that would have been mean spirited. We can't kill right. Gabby, so I guess we could kill Laura, but like w no. No, we killed a Wolverine. We killed Logan. Or oh, yeah. we could have had Laura get killed by the Ghost Raiders and then have her show up in the Zero Hour and be a Ghost Rider. 
Oh, that'd be cool. Then it would justify having Ghost Riders in the book. Exactly. What was the thing with Wolverine for no reason? Yeah, what was the thing with his adamantium and the vibranium? I needed him for my special thing. Yeah, but what is that? Like, that was clearly going to be a thing. Yeah, Yeah, but now it's over. But now it's done. But now it's nothing. Iron Man was going to serve some purpose in the book, and and now it's nothing. Instead, they all just walk into the sunset. They save the day. After the fall of civilization came something better, the end. And I'm like... (laughs) Damn I, it! I won't talk about what that better thing is. No, like, it's we're just, just we're leaving. I have a kid, and I get to uh, swing around. I don't have to pay taxes. It's awesome. <laughs> you don't have to pay taxes. How does your society function? There, there are also, still vampires everywhere, yeah. correct? You killed Dracula. Well, oh, so maybe we actually solved our vampire problem too. Did is that a thing where like, oh, you've killed the head vampire, the rest die? Maybe. Whatever you want. It's an alternate that, reality. I feel like that's not how vampires work in the Marvel universe. It, no, but like we we rarely kill we we, we kill Dracula a lot. But it doesn't kill all the vampires, so no. But also, so werewolves. you know, there's a trade-off here. You know, no taxes and, uh, you know, no, uh, no no, social media, but no colonoscopies and no, like, MRIs. You still never solved the electricity problem. There is no problem. That's the thing. They're like, actually, it's better without the electricity. Get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. Also, Hands down, no. it's, no, it's been not. seven years. There's no Sorcerer Supreme replacement. There's nobody who can go, uh, and then close the damn portal, and we can get started? No, right. because we no, don't want impossible. to. No, I have to Rather email not. everyone and invite them to the, the testing. You don't so, need to email anybody. You have psychics for that. I could see where you could say, like, no, no, the problem is we could get another sorcerer, but how's he going to get to the center of the earth? Right. Teleporting. I guess Doctor Strange to teleport. teleported yeah, there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, no one's as good as him. Yeah. So we, there's no one who could do all that yet. We're getting there. We're getting that you were building towards it. Yeah. Right. We're In training, Dark Ages 2. We're training the next source uh, of Shadowcat. Shadow Cat. Yeah, she could phase just through until, wow. and then just go like, okay, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Ugh, this is so annoying. But she couldn't get, she'd have to, she'd end up in China afterwards. <laughs> she'd be like, all right, I did it. Who? It's really frustrating. It's like it didn't end because, like, I want to know. Yeah. Like, what was Iron Man going to do? Right. Because he had this and challenge. He says Solve things, the problem for an hour. I promise you. He said he does explain like what he needs to do, but it's all like nonsense. It's mm. it's I you know when they say Faraday cage, they they barely know what that means. <laughs> you know, so when they when he says like I need I need adamantium, like no, I need adamantium because I want to show that Wolverine was in the book the whole time right. and we're going to kill him. Right. Uh, I need vibranium because it's sad that Captain America will lose his shield. Like, those are the reasons why I need those things because narratively speaking, I need those things to happen. Like, why did we have Doc Ock find out about the plan only to die minutes later if we're going to establish what the plan was because this is the only time that we can actually have anyone say <laughs> why Apocalypse shouldn't win at the end. Right. Yeah, but you'll destroy the Earth. Oh! <laughs> like, once you get to that ending, you're like, yeah. God damn it. If you fumble the ending that badly, that's all you can really remember. Well, and you, you can't even say that they fumble. Like, no, no, no. Ex- tell me the ending. It's like, okay, yes. Technically, all the things that I would ha- you set up happen, and it is satisfying in as much as the things that I wanted to see happen do take place. But, and it's like, that's all I need to know. <laughs> like no, but, but, but you there's needed, so many things that you set up that you didn't pay off. Yeah, you need right. to, and you needed it to breathe. Yeah. It's like, oh, 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 I'm sorry. I thought you people complained about decompression. <laughs> I thought you wanted your stories to be wrapped up in three pages. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I oh, want thank to be, you. I rest my case. I want it to be wrapped up when it's done. When it's done, I don't want another whole issue being like. Well, let's look back on that and see what we've learned. Yeah. Well, it's also make it consistent. Yeah. You know, if it's if it's decompression at the beginning, it should be decompression at the end. Absolutely. If- so, Marvel Dark Ages, you can pick it up and it'll be a quick read. So, enjoy. That's true. And uh, we'll see you guys next time with a new episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. So long. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, yeah, I know. I will say it started to lose me before it got to the end. But that's because... So it's not as much of a crime as it could have been. No, but it, it, that's because it started to get rushed right it issue four. It already was starting to get rushed, but... Yeah. Issue four is the, is the tipping point. Yeah. <laughs> is this a Spider-Man book? Kind of? Would you call it Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark? Oh, no! Oh. <laughs> I'd say this is probably more successful.